humerus. The humerus articulates with the scapula at the shoulder joint and with the radius and ulna at the elbow joint. The upper end of the humerus has a head which forms about one third of a sphere and articulates with the glenoid cavity of the scapula. Immediately below the head is the anatomic neck. Here it is. Below the neck are the greater and lesser tuberosities, separated from each other by the bicipital groove. Where the upper end of the humerus joins the shaft is a narrow surgical neck. About halfway down the lateral aspect of the shaft is a roughened elevation called the deltoid tuberosity. Behind and below the tuberosity is a spiral groove, which accommodates the radial nerve. The shoulder joint is a synovial ball and socket joint and involves articulation between the glenoid cavity of the scapula and the head of the humerus. However, the socket of the glenoid cavity of the scapula is itself quite shallow and is made deeper by the addition of the glenoid labrum. The glenoid labrum is a ring of cartilaginous fiber attached to the circumference of the cavity. Due to the very loose joint capsule that gives a limited interface of the humerus and scapula, it is the most mobile joint of the human body. This can sometimes allow the shoulder to dislocate. And to protect the joint from dislocation, we have some ligaments around. And the, first of all, we have the group of glenohumeral ligaments. There are three weak bands of fibrous tissue that strengthen the front of the capsule. The transverse humeral ligaments strengthens the capsule and bridges the gap between two tuberosities. Here it is. The coracohumeral ligament reinforces the capsule above and stretches from the root of the coracoid process to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. One more accessory ligament is the coracoacromial ligament, which extends between the coracoid process and the acromion. Its function is to protect the superior aspect of the joint. The shoulder joint is a muscle-dependent joint, as it lacks strong ligaments. The primary stabilizers of the joint include the biceps brachii on the anterior side of the arm and tendons of the rotator cuff, which are fused to all sides of the capsule except the inferior margin. The tendon of the long head of the biceps brachii passes through the bicipital groove of the humerus and inserts on the superior margin of the glenoid cavity to press the head of the humerus against the glenoid cavity. The tendons of the rotator cuff and their respective muscles, which are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis, stabilize and fix the joint. The supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor muscles aid in abduction and external rotation of the shoulder, while the subscapularis is in internal rotation of the humerus.